Okay, so here we are in the second half of section 6.5, and this is the real what 6.5 is about. The title is Solving Polynomial Equations. So in the first video that you watched, you looked at how to factor some higher degree polynomials with some special cases and special patterns for cubics and quartics. Now I want to take that to the next step and actually, after factoring, figure out what would be the solutions of these polynomials when they're set equal to zero. Okay, so just the basic blueprint of what we're going to be doing here. It's very similar to what we did when we solved quadratic equations with factoring. Um, what's kind of nice and why we took our time doing a lot of the things we did with quadratics is because when you start dealing with x cubes, x to the fourths, and so on and so forth, the steps are kind of mirrors, mirror images of each other and they mimic each other. So when you get good at one, it's not that big of a deal to kind of abstract it into higher degrees and work from there. So to remind you of what we did and what we're going to do throughout this video, first thing you want to do is you want to set one side of the equation equal to zero. Usually it's given to you that way, but if it's not, you need to make it so, just like we did with quadratics. Then you want to try to factor the left side. Okay, and this is where some of the techniques from the last video are going to come into play. Sums and differences of cubes, grouping, quadratic form, things like that. Okay? After you factor, you want to then solve each factor for the variable. Now here's the big difference. Each factor may not be a linear factor, so in solving each factor we may have to do a little more work. Case in point, let's look at the first example. So in the first example, we have solve x cubed plus 27 equals 0. All right, so is that set equal to 0? Yes, we've got our first step. Now the next thing you want to think about is how can we factor this? Well, from the last video, you know that these are both perfect cubes, and we have a pattern for factoring the sum of perfect cubes, and it looks like this, a plus b times a squared minus ab plus b squared. So if we make a x and we make b3, x cubed plus 27 factors into x plus 3 times x squared minus 3x plus 9 equals 0. Now that we factored, we're going to set each factor equal to 0. So we have x plus 3 equals 0, and x squared minus 3x plus 9 equals 0. Okay. Now like we did with quadratics, we're going to solve each of these factors. The first one is pretty easy. We just get x equals negative 3. But when we get to the second one, remember I told you when we were looking at sums and differences of perfect cubes that the, cu or the quadratic term, the trinomial, the second term, is always prime. Well, that means this second one can't be factored. We can't try to break down this x squared and unfoil it into two linear terms like we usually do with quadratics. So when you can't factor a quadratic, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but the only way, or at least the fastest way to solve it from here, is going to be the quadratic formula. That's why I made you memorize it. That's why I made you practice it. It's not going anywhere. So let's use the quadratic formula here. So x equals 3 plus or minus the square root of negative 3 squared, b squared, minus 4 times 1 times 9, 4ac, all over 2 times 1. Okay. Now we simplify everything inside the square root. You can put that this whole thing into your calculator, and you get x equals 3 plus or minus the square root of negative 27, all over 2. Now the square root of negative 27 we want to factor that, we want to simplify it, so the square root of positive 27 is going to be, well, 27 can be written as 3 times 9, 9 is 3 times 3, we have one pair of 3's, we take that on the outside of the square root, the inside has a 3, so that would be the square root of 27, 3 root 3, but it's the square root of negative 27, so we have to use an i, so this becomes 3 plus or minus 3i root 3 all over 2. That's our other two solutions, because you have a plus and a minus. Now notice that we had a cubic in our problem, and we have 1, 2, 3 solutions. That's always going to be the case. 
Remember, we talked about this when we were looking at different graphs and different degrees of polynomials, and we got, came to the conclusion that the degree of the polynomial tells you how many solutions you should have. Well, here we have it. There's three solutions because it's a cubic function. Don't stop until you get three solutions. Let's look at another one. Okay, This is solving 8x cubed minus 125 equals 0. So again, it's set equal to 0 already, so we're good to go there. Now this is another binomial with two perfect cubes. This time it's a difference. So remember, all the terms are the same as the pattern from the last problem, except the three signs, the three operation signs are going to be slightly different. So we have our a, which is 2x, minus our b, which is 5. Then for our second term, we have a squared, that's 4x squared, and then we use the opposite sign, so we put a plus sign in here. Then we do AB, which is 10x, plus, because the last sign is always plus, 25. And we set that equal to 0. Now we set each factor equal to 0. We set 2x minus 5 equals 0. And 4x squared plus 10x plus 25 equal to 0. Okay? So the first factor, we solve. We bring over the 5, and we divide by 2, and we get x equals 5 halves. The linear one is always the easy one. The hard one is going to be the quadratic here, so we've got to use our quadratic formula again. x equals negative 10, plus or minus, then we put that big square root symbol, b squared, so 10 squared, or, yeah, 10 squared, which would be positive 10, not negative 10, minus 4 times 4, times 25, 4ac, all over 2 times 4, okay? We'll get that discriminant, we'll put the whole thing inside the square root in our calculator, and we get negative 10 plus or minus the square root of negative 300 all over 8. All right, so we'll break down 300. 300 is 2 and 150. 150 is 2 and 75, I'm running out of room. 75 is 2 and 25. 25 is 5 and 5, so we've got a pair of 5s, and we got a pair of 2s. So on the outside, we'll put a 10. On the inside, we have a root. Excuse me, actually, 75, I made a mistake. That should be 3 times 25. So here's our pair of 2s. We still have a 10, but inside should be a 3. Square root of 300 is 10 root 3. But it's negative, so we've got to put an i in there, so it's 10i root 3. So simplifying, we get negative 10 plus or minus 10i root 3 all over 8. Now, tens, these tens on the outside of the square root and the 8 are all even. So we can divide all these things that I've circled by 2, and we get negative 5 plus or minus 5i root 3 all over 4. That is our other two solutions. Okay, so that's how you would use factoring to solve for cubic equations, particularly ones that are sums and differences of perfect cubes. Okay, we'll do some practice with that after the video. Now I want to show you some quartics, and we're going to factor all these quartics using that quadratic form that we used in the last video. So we have third example, x to the fourth plus 6x squared plus 5 equals 0. Now, remember, quadratic form, we're going to factor this kind of like if it was x squared plus 6x plus 5, but our first terms, instead of being x's, are going to be x squareds. So we think of what two numbers multiply to 5, but add to 6. They are 5 and 1. So we get x to the... Well, oh, sorry. I rewrote that. Now, after I rewrite that, we get x squared plus 5 and x squared plus 1 equals 0. Okay? Two things multiply to 0. One of them has to be 0. We set them each equal to 0 and figure out what x can be. So x squared plus 5 can be 0 and x squared plus 1 can be 0. Okay? Now for the first factor, we'll subtract 5 from both sides and get x squared equals negative 5. Now when you have x squared equals a number, this is kind of like we did with completing the square. When you want to undo that squaring, the way you do it is by taking a square root of both sides. And then that allows us to just write x on the left, and that equals plus or minus the square root of negative 5. 
Now we want to simplify that. 5 is prime, so we can't use the factor tree like we did in the last example. But we can take out the negative sign and get x equals plus or minus i root 5. Okay? There's two answers, i root 5 and negative i root 5. Remember, this is a quartic. I'm not going to stop till I get four solutions. Where are my other two going to come from? The second factor. It's a quadratic, so we'll get two answers. So like we did in the first uh, factor, we'll subtract 1. We get x squared equals negative 1. Square root both sides. x equals plus or minus the square root of negative 1. And we all know what the square root of negative 1 is. That's right, I hope you shouted it out. It's i. So x equals plus or minus i. Okay, we'll try one more, a little bit harder. All right, 4x to the 4th plus 15x squared equals 4. All right, we're not set equal to 0 here. We have to set equal to 0 before we can factor, so we'll subtract 4 from both sides. And now what I want us to factor is 4x to the 4th plus 15x squared minus 4 equals 0. Now, this is a little tougher because of this 4, but that's okay. Remember the AC method. I'm going to break it down again because I think there's still a little difficulty with this. So we do A times C is negative 16, B is 15. So I want two things that multiply to negative 16 and add to 15. And if you think about it, I'll give you a couple seconds to think about it on your own. Did you come up with 16 and negative 1? I hope you did. Now here's how you use these two numbers. You're going to rewrite the problem. You're going to use the same first term, 4x to the fourth. Now I'm going to take this 15x squared and I'm going to rewrite it using the numbers that I've circled. So I'm going to do 4x to the fourth plus 16x squared minus x squared minus 4 equals 0. Okay? Notice the two terms in black are from the original. The two red terms I got from picking these two numbers that are circled on the right. Now we group and we take out GCFs. So 4x to the 4th plus 16x squared is a GCF of 4x squared. Left over, x squared plus 4. Negative x squared and negative 4 have a GCF of negative 1. x squared plus 4 is our left over. Outside numbers go together. Inside numbers go together. And that's our two factors. Now we set each of these two factors equal to 0 and solve. So we get 4x squared minus 1 equals 0. x squared plus 4 equals 0. All right, we'll start with the first term. Add 1 to both sides. Divide through by 4, and you get x squared equals 1 fourth. Now again, I want to undo the squaring, so I take the square root of both sides. So x equals plus or minus the square root of 1 fourth. And we have talked before, when you take the square root of a fraction, that's like taking the square root of the numerator and the square root of the denominator separately. And 1 and 4 are easy square roots. We get 1 half. So there's two of the four answers. For the next two, we'll move the 4 over. We get x squared equals negative 4. Again, I want to undo my squaring, so I'll take the square root of each side. x equals plus or minus 2i. Because the square root of 4 is 2, we have that negative sign, so it becomes 2i. And there's your four solutions. Okay? There's some problems on a worksheet that I want you to practice. You can either look at them on the web and do them in your notes, or you can print it out. Um, I'll have solutions posted later. Enjoy this. Uh, we'll talk more about this in class. I know it's a lot to throw at you all at once, but I want to kind of keep going with this. Um, I think you'll start to see this and start to pick it up. It's really not a lot more than we've done. It's just combining a lot of the things that we've done before, like factoring, like the quadratic formula, in addition to some of these new factor tricks. Okay? Have a good one, and I will see you soon.